Hey, how's it going guys? This is Jason from MicrosoldingSupply.com and today I've got a MacBook board that has no green light on the charger and does not turn on. We'll be taking an in-depth look at the one wire circuit, but before we get started on that, I wanted to let you know about our website. So if you are a computer shop, a phone shop, a technician, tinkerer, or anyone looking for microsoldering parts, supplies, or tools, check out our website at MicrosolderingSupply.com. We've got a ton of parts for iPhones, iPads, MacBooks, PS4s, Xboxes, Nintendo Switches, and all the tools for them as well. We stock and ship everything from the US and have free two-day shipping to all the states. Now let's head into the shop and take a look at this MacBook board. So I'm going to start off by plugging the charger into the motherboard. And the charger does not light up and the fan does not spin. So this is where the charger connects to the logic board. And up here we've got our MagSafe DC power jack at the top, J6900. J6 and we've got a few pins on it. The first two are going to be PP18V5 DC and fuse, which is going to be 18 volts coming in from the charger. Next we've got pins 3 and 4 which connect to ground. And pin 5 is adapter sense. Adapter sense goes to our one wire over voltage protection circuit, which connects to U6900. So that's where the name one wire comes from. Now U6900 basically takes an internal signal and sends it to an external component, uh, in this case our charger. And internally we can see that this connects to sys1 wire. And sys1 wire goes to this chip here, which is U4900. And U4900, if we zoom out, is our SMC. So here we've got our SMC talking along sys1 wire to U6900, which will allow the internal side of it, sys1 wire, to go externally along adapter sense to the charger. And that'll be what turns the charger on and tells the green light to turn on. Now U6900 needs a, one thing to operate, which is going to be VCC or power. And this gets power from SMC, BC, ACOK, VCC. SMC, BC, ACOK, VCC comes from U6900, sorry, U6901. And U6901 is what we call a logic gate. And we can tell it's a logic gate based on the shape. So we've got a flat vertical side here, and we've got a hemispherical side uh, opposite it. And that implies that this component is a logic gate. Now what a logic gate does is similar to like a MOSFET gate, except it operates on logical conditions. Conditions like AND, OR, NOT, NOT, OR, etc, etc. And we can determine what kind of logic gate this is by finding the data sheet for the component, uh, the component being a TC7SC08FE. And so I'll take that uh, number or name or whatever you want to call it and type it into Google. And that's how we get the data sheet uh, from this page here, Toshiba Semiconductor, which I've already opened here. And we can see that under the description, it lists it as a two inputs AND gate. So that implies that this component operates on the AND condition. Now we know that we want to have our output Y be present or high in order to power U6900 on the VCC pin. Now in order for Y to be present or high, we can see on this truth table that we need both A and B to be high as well. A and B come from SMC, BC, AC, OK. SMC, BC, AC, OK comes from, if we search for this, SMC, BC, AC, OK comes from Charger, AC, OK. Now Charger, AC, OK comes from this ship here, you see it's coming out from the ship U7000 or the ISL6259. So once Charger ACOK is present, it'll turn into SMC BC ACOK, which will go to U6901 on pins one and two, A and B, and allow Y to come out of U6901 to power U6900 to take Sys1 wire from the SMC and send it along adapter sense to the charger and allow the SMC to talk to the charger and turn on the green light. Now U6901 also needs PP3V42G3 hot one wire protect to power it. And this comes from PP3V42G3 hot. 
And so that's why PP342G3Hot is always the first rail we check when we have no power, or sorry, no green light on the charger. And if PP342G3Hot is not present, then, or not uh, being produced, then we're not going to get PP342G3Hot one wire protect in order to power U6901 and allow the uh, SMCBC ACOK to go to power U6900. SMCBC ACOK we know comes from the ISL6259 along charger ACOK. So now we have to figure out what it takes to produce charger ACOK. So the ISL6259 is responsible for a few functions. Number one being producing PP bus G3 hot to power the computer, the laptop motherboard, uh, as well as charging the battery. You can see it goes to two from battery here, and it gets all this from the charger from adapter. Okay. Now, for charger ACOK to be produced, we need a few things. First of all, we need to get power, and power comes from DCN, which goes to PP charger DCN. And if we follow this backwards, we can see that this comes from from adapter or our charger. So PP DCN S5 charger, our 18 volts coming in from the charger, goes into D D7005, which goes to R7005, which is a low ohm, low resistance resistor into DCN pin on U7000 to power U7000. Now this also needs VHST, which just comes from PP3V40G3Hot charger, which comes from PP3V40G3Hot, which is also why we need PP3V40G3Hot present first before anything else in the computer. Finally, we need to have charger ACN. And charger ACN comes from this point between these two resistors, R7011, and R7010. Now here we've got two resistors, R7011 and R7010 connected in series, one of which goes to, if we follow this line, PPDCN S5 charger, which is an 18 volt power rail, second of which R7011 goes to this line here, which is ground, GND is ground. So two resistors, two or more resistors rather, one connected to, uh, two or more resistors in series, one connected to a power rail, and the other end of which is connected to ground, implies that these resistors make up what's called a voltage divider circuit. And a voltage divider circuit does pretty much what it sounds like it does, which is divide the voltage proportionally uh, based on the resistances of the resistors in the circuit. So that means that this point between these two resistors, R7010 and R7011, should be at a voltage that's proportional to the resistances of these two resistors R7010 and R7011. Now we can calculate what voltage we want to see at this point by using a voltage divider calculator. So if we take these two resistances, first one being 30.1 kilo ohms, second one being 9.31 kilo ohms, and we type that into a voltage divider calculator like we have here. So we go 30.1 kilo, kilo ohms and 9.31 kilo ohms, right? Yes. And our source, source voltage is going to be the voltage we started out at, in this case, PPDC and S5 charger, which is 18 volts. That means our output voltage should be about 4.25 volts. In other words, this point here between R7010 and R7011 should be about 4.25 volts, which will go into the AC end pin on U7000, and once this pin reads 4.25 volts and it's getting power on DCN and VHST, then it'll produce charger ACOK. Charger ACOK will go to become SMCBC ACOK, which will go over to U6901 on the input side, and once U6901 has both A and B present from SMCBC ACOK, it'll produce Y on the output, which will go over to U6900 to power U6900 and allow sys one wire coming from the SMC on the internal side to talk to adapter sense on the external side and tell the charger to turn on and turn on the green light. Now the first thing I'm going to check when I have no green light is going to be PP3V42G3Hot. And I'm testing on this coil here and I'm getting zero volts. 
There's obviously been liquid in this area, as you can see by the corrosion on the coil and the capacitors in the area. So I'm going to look at the whole top edge of the board and the surrounding parts to see if there's been liquid damage anywhere else. Overall it looks pretty clean, so I'm going to focus on the PP3B42 G3 hot circuit. So the point I'm checking for PP3B42 is right here on L7095. And I should be measuring 3.42 volts, but I'm not. Now the chip that's responsible for this circuit is U7090. So I'm going to search this up on the schematic. And you can see right here we've got U7090. And this is the 3.42 volt G3 hot supply. So in other words, this circuit is responsible for gener generating PP3V42 G3 hot. And we can see on the output side here on the right, we've got PP3V42 G3 hot coming out. Now on the input side, if we follow this backwards, this connects up to our charger, PPDCN G3 hot. So this chip is, is taking our charger voltage, 18 volts, and turning it into PP3V42 G3 hot, which is 3.42 volts. So that means that this is taking a higher voltage and turning it into a lower voltage, making this circuit a buck converter circuit. And that means that this chip here, U7090, is the buck controller in the circuit. Now, this chip, U7090, needs a few things in order to create PP3V42 G3 hot. First of all, it needs power to power the chip and create PP3V42 G3 hot from. And that's going to come in along the, this, line, this point here, V in. Next, it needs a signal to turn it on. And that is going to be this pin here, SHDN. So SHDN stands for shutdown. And this is basically what other chips would call an enable pin, except it's named shutdown. Next up, it needs to be able to determine whether the voltage it's generating is the correct 3.42 volts. And that's done via what's called a feedback circuit. And this pin here, FB, stands for feedback. And if we follow where this pin goes, we can see it connects up to this resistor and connects up to PP3V42's G3 hot on the output side. So this creates a feedback loop for the chip to determine uh, what voltage it's generating on the output, whether it's too high, too low, or just right. So what voltage do we need to see on VN? Well, if we follow this backwards, we can see that this comes from PP18V5DCN ISIL R. In other words, this comes from the charger. So this should be about 18 volts. Shutdown, similarly, can be followed backwards. And we can see that it goes into this resistor, resistor here, R7080, which is a zero ohm resistor, meaning that this res resistor is basically acting as a wire. So if we see what comes before that resistor, we follow this back to the same point, PP18V5, DC and ISIL R, which is our charger at 18 volts. So shutdown should also be measuring about 18 volts in order to tell the chip to, to turn on. On feedback, we've got a resistor here, R7095. And this resistor is pretty high resistance, 348 kilo ohms. On the other side of this resistor, we've got PP3V42G3 hot. So here, there should be 3.42 volts. But what about here? Well, if you remember from our PPBUSH G3 hot circuit, our U7000 ISL 6259, this is responsible for creating charger ACOK. And in order to create charger ACOK, we need to have charger ACN. Charger ACN comes from this point between these two resistors here, R7010 and R7011. And these two resistors, R7010 and R7011, are connected in series. And on the one side of the resistor, we've got a power rail PPDCN S5 charger. And on the other side, on R7011, we've got ground. So two or more resistors in series, one going between a power rail and one going to ground, makes a voltage divider circuit, meaning that this point here where charger ACN connects should be a lower voltage than what we started with, proportional to the two resistances in the circuit. Similarly, we've got R7095 and R7096. These two resistors are connected in series. R7095 is connected to a power rail, PP3V42G3 hot, and R7096 is connected to ground. So two resistors in series, 
one connected to a power wall and one connected to ground makes this a voltage divider, meaning that this point here where PP3V42G3 hot FB connects to should be a lower voltage than what it started at proportional to its two resistances. So we can see what voltage we should be getting here uh, by using a voltage divided calculator. And we're going to make note of these two resistances. So the first one is going to be 348 kilo ohms. Second one is going to be 200 kilo ohms. And I'm going to go over to Google and find a voltage divider calculator. So let's type in 348 kilo ohms, 200 kilo ohms. And our source voltage is going to be PP3V42G3HUT, in other words, 3.42 volts. So we'll type that in here. And according to this calculator, we should be getting 1.248 volts at this point here between these two resistors. So PP or P3V42G3HUT FB should be 1.248 volts. And so if U7090 is able to measure 1.248 volts at pin 1 FB, then it'll know that it's creating the correct voltage for PP3V42G3HOT. Now, if for example, one of these resistors was blown or damaged or missing or uh, not the correct resistance, then this point here will, only, will not be 1.248 volts and the chip U7090 will alter its bucking of the, uh, in the circuit in order to create 1.248 volts here at FB pin, but at the expense of changing PP3V42G3 hot. Now going back to the board, I'm going to start off by checking for a short to ground on PP3V42. And in diode mode, I'm measuring about 0.322 volt drop. So there's no short to ground as there's a high voltage drop to ground. Next is going to see if U7090 is getting power on V in. And again, this is coming from the charger, so I'm going to be looking for 18 volts, which I have. So after that, we're going to see if U7090 is being told to turn on on the shutdown pin. And here I should be measuring 18 volts, but I'm getting zero. So U7090 is not being told to turn on. Now again, this pin here, pin A, is the shutdown pin for U7090. And this needs to have 18 volts in order for U7090 to turn on. Now this gets 18 volts uh, from the charger via R7080. And R7080 is a zero ohm resistor. Now if R7080 has gone from a zero ohm resistor to a very high value resistance in the circuit, then the shutdown pin on U7090 will not get 18 volts from the charger. And looking at the board here, we can actually see that R7080 has actually been corroded off the board, meaning that the line going between the charger and the shutdown pin on U7090 is broken. It's become an open circuit. That means that 18 volts can't go from the charger to the shutdown pin on U7090, and U7090 will not turn on because it's not being told to turn on. Now obviously to repair this, I'm gonna have to replace R7080 to complete the circuit. So I'm just going to scrape away the oxidation on the pads and clean them up with an X-Acto knife and then tin them with some solder and plop a new resistor right on there from a donor board. Now that R7080 looks nice and pretty, I'm going to put some fresh solder on the pins of U7090 and do the same for the components in the surrounding area. So, here's our charger. Got the fastener stuck to my charging port. Got a light. Fan spin. So that's an overview of a few things, the PP3V42G3 hot circuit, the CIS one wire circuit, and how the SMC talks to the charger to turn on the green light. I'd like to thank you all for watching, and if you were able to watch this video without falling asleep at any time, please go ahead and give us a thumbs up and a subscribe. If you have any questions about anything in this video, leave a comment below, and again, if you are in the hobby or business of micro soldering and are interested in any of the parts, tools, or service seen in this video, check us out online at microsolderingsupply.com.